Amen. Come on, saints. Let's give God some praise if we all make good. Amen. Amen. Let us all stand for the call to worship. The Lord is in his holy temple and all the earth keeps silent before him. We're going to ask the choir to lead us in our opening selection. Whoa, like a ship that's tossed in the Amen. 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 Amen.
Come on, choir. Let's have another selection and allow the spirit to move in this place. Amen.
some kind of saints and friends. Yes. It's a pleasure to be in the house of the Lord. Yes. If I may lift up in your text, it's Hebrews 3 and 13. And in, in a, his and to his letter to the Ephesians, Paul recommended saying, what is helpful for building up others according to their needs that it may benefit those that listen? I would like to share an inspirational story with you guys that I read. And it's titled, The Hole We Feel. There was a man asked to paint a boat. The man bought his paint and brushes and began to paint the boat a bright red, as the owner asked him to. While painting, he noticed a small hole in the boat and quietly repaired it. When he finished painting, he received his money and left. The next day, the owner came to the painter and presented him with a nice check, much higher than the paint job was worth. The painter was surprised and said, you've already paid me for painting the boat. The owner said, yeah, that is true. But this is not for painting the boat. This is for repairing the hole in the boat. The painter said, but it was such a small service. Certainly, it's not worth paying me this amount for something so small. He said, my dear friend, you don't understand. Let me tell you what happened. When I, when I asked you to paint the boat, I forgot to tell you that there was a hole in the boat. Mm -hmm. When the boat dried, my kids took the boat and went out on a fishing trip. Mm -hmm. And they didn't know that there was a hole in the boat. Mm -hmm. He said, I wasn't home at the time. The man said, when I returned, I noticed that they had taken the boat out. Mm -hmm. I was so frightened and scared. Because I remember the boat had a hole in it. Mm -hmm. Imagine my relief and joy when I saw them coming back from the fishing trip. They had, then I looked at the boat and found that the hole had been repaired. Yes. You see, you, you, you just don't understand what that did for me. You saved my children's life. Mm -hmm. I don't have enough money to pay you for such a small deed that you've done. So no matter who, when, or how, continue to help someone. You may have to wipe away some tears or lend a listening ear, but carefully repair the leak that you find. You see, you never know when one is in need of us or when we can care for someone with kindness or when their kindness may return to you in a surprising way. Yes, yes. Along the way, you may have already repaired some boat holes and some lives for several people without even realizing how many lives you have saved. Yes. So I say to you today, keep on doing what God needs you to do and you will always do the right thing. Make a difference in someone's life today. Fill someone's hole. Tell them how they can be saved. And tell them about Jesus Christ who can save their life. Amen. Amen. Have a blessed day. Greetings, church. Greetings. Greetings. Uh, Ephesians 2 talks about being seated with Christ <coughs> in heavenly places. And one way off the wonder, how could we be in two places at the same time? Yeah. But God is so awesome and so much God that he never looked at the unfinished work. He always looked at the complete work. For instance, he called you holy. He called you righteous. He said you're saved. He's not looking at the state that we're in now. He's looking at the completed work. Yes. So remember, whatever you're going through, it's not finished yet. It's okay. not over. Uh -huh. All right. Where you at is not where you're going to end up at. Amen. So just hold on to God and force over. The work will be complete. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. It's so good to be back in the house of the Lord one more time. Yes. Amen. I'm going to say something out of 
uh, John 11th chapter. And we know John, uh, the 11th chapter of St. John, the 31st verse. That's the shortest verse in the Bible. Jesus wept. And it was two sisters, Mary and Martha. They had a brother that died. That's right. Okay, Jesus wasn't there. He was maybe a couple miles away. And all the Jews were there. And they was uh, confident the sister. And Jesus got the, uh, Martha sent for Jesus. But he stayed on. Four more days. I mean, he stayed. He didn't go right then. But he had told uh, his wife that, that uh, Jesus was, uh, that uh, Lazarus was sleeping. But they thought that it was just a natural sleep. But he had to explain to them, Lazarus is dead. He's dead. He's dead. So finally, in four days, Jesus uh, came back. And so Martha ran out to meet him. First thing she said, if you'd been here, my brother would not have, have that. Right. <laughs> but I know this, you know, as the resurrection, that he's going to rise again. But Jesus told her, I am the resurrection. Yes. And All right. Yes. And he explained to him, so she went back and, uh, and told Mary that the teacher was there. So uh, Mary went. And she said about the basic same thing. But Mary did something different. She fell down at his feet. Yes. That's right. And began to cry. That's right. Well and cry. And Jesus wept. Yes. Jesus wept. They said basically the same thing. But something moves in his spirit. Let's me know that he's concerned about us. Yes. He cried along with us. Yes. Whatever we are going through with, he's going yes. with us. You're not alone. Yes, where is he? Where do we lay? And he went, and we know the story. He asked him to come forth. He said, Lazarus, come forth. That's right. And he had to come forth, didn't he? All right, yeah. Amen. Whatever your situation is, uh -huh. give it to the Lord. Yes. Jesus is concerned about us. Yes. God bless you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Today, I would like for you to focus on the eraser on a pencil. Erasers are used to remove marks and smudges. And when we make a mistake, we take the eraser and it removes the mark and the mistake we made. That's because the eraser takes up the graphite, the particles that linger around. And that's the way Jesus does us. John, the first John, the first chapter, the ninth verse, said that we confess our sins. He is just and righteous and will forgive us. He's faithful and will forgive us of our sins. Cleanse us. And I want you to know this morning the mistakes we make. Lord have mercy. The Lord just takes the erase. The erase is away our sins. When we bless somebody out, he erases our sin. When we feel like we're gonna do something out of the extraordinary, he erases away our sin. He cleanses us from all of our unrighteousness. And I want you to know this morning, we ought to always think of ourselves as being erased by God. Because that old man will rise up in us every now and then. So we just think about when we make a mistake. He erases it over and over and over again. But the what can wash away our sin? Right. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. The blood erases our fault and mistake. God bless you this morning. Come on, let's give God some praise. Amen. Thank you, ministers, for that encouraging word. Amen. At this time, we're going to ask the choir.
can call him in the midnight hour. Yeah. Oh, we can call him in the noonday. Yeah. We can call on God anytime yeah. that we need him. Amen. Amen. That's why he's worthy of all praise. Hallelujah. Yeah. As the choir was singing, I got to thinking about how that the Lord God has given us the space to be able to worship. Amen. Yeah. And I don't mean the building. Mm -hmm. I mean that there are some things that we have been through that have tried to crowd in on our worship. Yes. There's some problems that we have that seem to want to come inside the building with us. But God has given us the space through Jesus Christ that no matter what we're going through, no matter what we're facing, we still got a friend that's still closer to the world. Conversation that we're having. Deuteronomy, the sixth chapter, the fourth verse through the ninth verse. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. These words that I am giving you today 
are to be in your heart. Repeat them to your children. Talk about them when you sit in your house and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Bind them as a sign on your hand and let them be a symbol on your forehead. Write them on the doorposts of your house and on your city gates. Father, we thank you so much for your word and your grace and your mercy. Holy Spirit, only you know how to preach the word. We ask, O oh Holy God, that you would bring forth the word in power that our hearts may be able to perceive the depth of your love and the greatness of your being and that we may be transformed continually by your word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. This morning for a brief subject, I would like to speak on the topic, surviving your situation. Mm -hmm. Surviving your situation. We find that in this life, we're always in a situation, some kind of controversy. Job understood it when he said that man is a few days and full of trouble. He understood what kind of world we were living in. That this is not what God has promised us, mm -hmm. but he has promised us better than this. Yeah, yeah. We know that David also understood the tragedy and the death of this world when he said, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Yeah. He described this world as the shadow of death. Jesus said it's the land of darkness. Mm -hmm. You don't live in the land of the living, you live in the land of the dying. That's right. Mm -hmm. The Bible teaches us that God took us from darkness and brought us into light. Yes. Took us from death and gave us light. Yes. And so all the writers of the scripture have always taught us that this is not our destination. This is not our home. This is a place of sorrow. This is the place where people experience pain and suffering. This is the place. This is the arena that we all experience the suffering and pain of life's tragedies and life events. Yes. So it reminds us of how we're going to get over, mm -hmm. how we're going to survive. We're all constantly visiting the doctor because these physical bodies of ours are always breaking down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we're always at the doctor getting some kind of medicine in order to keep it going. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Tightening it up. <laughs> getting our blood pressure checked. Mm -hmm. Cholesterol. Mm -hmm. Even though we do all of those things, we're still breaking down. Because again, this is the land of the dying. It's not the land of the living. you young now, but you'll be old. Because I hear David said, I once was young, but now I'm old. Yeah, you keep waking up, you'll get to where I am and where some older than me are. If you just keep waking up. But in the process of getting up every day, there's a lot of events that take place in our life. There's a lot of things that happen to us. There's a lot of things that are tragedies and things that happen that sometimes take the wind out of us. Sometimes set us back a little bit. Sometimes even at our own health we get surprised that when the doctors say, well, you're not really in the best of health, even though we felt pretty good when we got up. Yes, sir. Surviving our situation is what man does on this side of life. He's always trying to survive. Yeah. Whether we got a job that we like or don't like, we're there because we're trying to make money to do what? Survive. Right. Yes, Lord. But God, mm -hmm. God is addressing the children of Israel before they go into this situation. Mm -hmm. He's got them pulled to the side and he's going to tell them something before they get into the situation. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that the Lord says, Here in Israel, if I can practice a little bit with my Hebrew. It is, it is said, Shema, Shema, Shema O Israel. <clears throat> Yahweh Eloheinu, Yahweh Ahai. The Lord our God is one. <laughs> this Shema is the beginning prayer of both the morning and the evening in the Jewish ceremonies. <laughs> they say this every day. <laughs> this is a central theme of the Christian life, is that we believe in God. Not just a God, but believe in God, the creator of heaven and earth. This is so important that God pulled them to the side. This word Shema means actually not just to listen, but to understand. 
Let me understand. You got to understand what I'm telling you God is saying. It doesn't just mean understand, but it means to gather, to collect yourself, to get yourself together, to collect in a group. I remember when Saul the king said he summoned the people. That's the same word Shabbat. He called them all together. Some of us are sitting here today, but our mind is over across town. You better gather yourself together in the presence of God. That part that's all across town might hear something that the word of God is trying to speak. The Bible teaches us we need to gather ourselves and get ourselves together. Collect yourself in the presence of God and allow God to minister to the whole person. Don't allow your situation and your problem that you brought the church crowd you out of what God is getting ready to say to you. You need to tell that situation and that problem, get out of the way. I got another piece of me that needs to get over here and sit down. Jesus is saying to me today. Yes, sir. Yes. Shema Yisrael. Yahweh Eloheinu. Yahweh Aha. And he says this. He says, love the Lord your God with all of your heart. Not a part of it. Not a piece of it. Not what you want to give. You ain't giving God no donation. You just giving him what you want to have. He said, give me everything you got. Because it belongs to me anyway. Give me your heart. Say, give me your, give me all your soul. And give me all your strength. Put everything into it. Don't put part of it in there and then walk away saying, oh, that didn't work. You gotta put it all in there. I'm gonna get to my point in a minute. But God began to teach them and tell them that He's given them these words. And this is really important. He's given them the doctrine to keep them alive in the situation they're getting ready to go to. All right, so when he says he's giving them these words, he's giving them this teaching, this doctrine, in order that they might be able to face the situation that they're getting ready to face and not lose themselves. How many times we get to working and working and working and working, and before we know it, we don't lose who we are. We don't attend church no more. We don't fellowship no more. We don't pray no more. You see, that situation is destroying us. It's distracting us from the main purpose of why God called us to start with. We got lost in work. We get lost in our friends and everything else and instead of getting lost in what God is telling us to do. And that's why we're all distracted. That's why when we come to church, somebody got to dig us out of the ditch before we can worship God. Because when we came here, we get soiled up by all the stuff and tragedy and shortcomings of this world. Yeah. I'll get there. Take your time. Take your time. But he's giving them the doctrine. I reminded the Apostle Paul told the Corinthian church that if any man come to you preaching any other Jesus, then we preach. If, it, if you come and get another spirit, then the spirit you already received. If they come preaching a gospel that you already accepted, then he said you got to get rid of that person because they're nobody. They are a curse. And what I'm trying to tell you is that they understood one thing, that if you've got the right doctrine, if you pay attention to what God is saying, you will have the right spirit. And if you've got the right spirit, then that means that you can face anything. But if you've got the wrong spirit, no matter how much you call on God, you'll be just like a blind Samson. You'll be calling on the Lord and the Father that will put your eyes out. But before they put your eyes out, why don't you just obey what God said? Surround yourself with the doctrine. Surround yourself with the word of God. Tell it to your children. When you're sitting up, when you're sitting down, when you're walking across the road, where you're going, but put it on your door. In other words, don't let none of this escape you. You got to keep the word because where where you're going. There's some folk that don't believe in the word. I just told you that we live in the valley of the shadow of death. There's some folk that don't believe in God. There's some people around that don't believe in Jesus. There's some people that's running our social media, that are running the news, that are running all the stuff we interact with, that have no love for the Lord Jesus Christ. And therefore, we got to be wise and serve the Holy Spirit. We got to be able to serve the Spirit and understand what's really going on in our neighborhood. That we can know what God's will is for our neighborhood and our life. But in order to do that, you got to have the right doctrine. You got to have the right spirit. You got to know the right Jesus. Not the Jesus that's commercialized. Not the Jesus that looks like he's so smooth, he got 
You need that kind of Jesus. And when you got that kind of Jesus in your life, you don't wear what the world say because the world didn't give it to you. For the situation that they're going through. Well, Pastor, what kind of situation were they going through? They were going to the land of what God called the heathen. Those folk that had rejected God. Those people that didn't want to live right. They had turned the land and polluted the land. The land that God gave other nations. They turned to, to worshiping the created thing instead of the creator. They started performing all acts of violence and they started doing things that God wasn't pleased with. So God said, I'm going to remove these nations out of the way and I'm going to bring Israel in. He told Israel, don't think you're going to get the land because you're such a goody goody, but you're going to get it because they didn't obey what I said. Therefore, I'm moving you on in. He don't want none of us to get arrogant. Ain't none of us going to heaven because we're so good. We're going to heaven because Jesus Christ died for us. Yes. <laughs> 
say in your word is to meditate on your goodness, God. That when I read your word, it's fire to my feet. When I read your word, it gives me joy in my soul. Because your word is truth and your word is life. Yeah. 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 Your situation, you've got to know who he is. Yeah. And you've got to be one in him. Yeah. And I'm going to bring it to a close, but I want to tell you this. So the people over there were worshiping other gods. They had maybe started out on the right track. But pretty soon, they was worshiping other gods. In other words, they lost their allegiance to God. When God called Israel together and told him about, Love the Lord thy God with all our heart, mind, and strength. What he was saying was, I need your allegiance. 100% of your allegiance. Yeah. Because over there, they're worshiping all kinds of things. Yeah. And God said, when you get over there, don't inquire on what they're worshiping. Yeah. Don't inquire on how they worship. Yeah. Just get rid of everything. Yeah. And it's amazing how us Christian folk are still checking our horoscopes. Oh, and it's amazing God. how we still have those upside down uh, hard shoes in our house. And it's amazing how we keep on picking these what we call lucky numbers. Oh, because why? Because now we don't got distracted. And now those things have got influence over us, which takes us away from our commitment of God, who said, I'll make you the head and not the tail. All you got to do is just trust me. The same God that said, don't bow down to the moon and the stars. Don't be dismayed or discouraged or fear whenever you see a star falling, because it's just a star. Because I, the Lord thy God, I'm the one that makes you prosperous. Isn't it amazing how we call ourselves so called Christians that we're still practicing what the Say we can get away with it, but I'm here to tell you right now the reason why we got so many difficulties is because we're not worshiping God on a hundred. We're worshiping God on 99, 98, 97, and some of you just getting a fancy break at seven. What I'm trying to tell you today, church folks, is that in order to find your situation, you got to give God every day you got so that you can get over this situation and go beyond that situation and have peace in the land that God gave be able to enjoy the fruits of what God has already given you. You will never be able to do that. You got to worship God with all your heart, mind, and soul. You got to tell that part of you that want to hang out at the club. No, we can't hang out tonight, baby. We got to go on back to church. We got to give ourselves together and let the Lord bless me. In other words, those things had influence over them. Yeah. It distracted them from the one worship that God wanted out of Israel. Yeah. Because they worship everything else yeah. but God. Yeah. Isn't it amazing that when you worship anything, it takes your attention to it. And what I'm trying to tell you is sometimes we worship our arthritis. Yeah. We'll think of it before we think of God. Yeah. We'll wake up in the morning and check and see if our arthritis is still there. How the knee feel. Isn't it amazing how we, we worship our uh, other elders? We're going to make sure they're all right. We're going to check our blood pressure. We're going to check our pulse. We're going to do all of those kinds of things that they distract us from the worship of God and let your pulse be elevated on about 10 beats. And you'll say, I can't go to church today. But let somebody call on you and tell you they got to sail down at the stove. Jesus Christ, the only reason he got from the dead 
Hell, he will have